Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, much to do and, and much going on with regards to people's research into this birth certificate. So I thought I would give a little bit uh, more of a de in-depth review of what's going on here. Uh, this uh, certifying and certificate is evidence of owned property. Now in Canada, we have what's called the Canadian ownership, catch the words folks, Canadian Ownership Control Determination Act. Determination, of course, being the opposite of termination. And when we look at the date that this enactment came into place in April of 1982, in suspect that we have a Jewish Jubilee, 49 years taking place, I decided to go back 49 years and see what took place. April 10th, 1933, the repeal of Section 4 of the Dominion Notes Act. They took the gold, folks. You see, all of the corporations of the world were intentionally forecast to be brought into a bankruptcy. By the creation of the 1913 Federal Reserve Act, the Jewish bankers, these are the false Jews Christ talked about in Revelation 2.9.3.9. Notice I said the word false. You can't be anti-Semitic or discriminatory against Jews if you're talking about false Jews that Christ pointed us to. He warned us about these fellows. You know, those were the money changer guys that he drove out of the temple. The only action that we saw Christ exhibiting something negative and forceful. And certainly not love. If it was, it was pretty tough love. So, the idea is, is they put this whole nation, or nations, pardon me, under this arranged collapse of the stock market in 1929. Then the plan was they'd go to the false Jew king's door knocking, saying, my, those are nice crown jewels. So all the rest of the goyim of the world will think, wow, the king's in trouble now. He's going to lose his, Jew his jewels. Well, no, the king went to the Westminster Abbey. That's part of the ecclesiastical side of his kingship, not the secular House of Commons. So he tells them the story and they say, okay, well, we'll write you a, a writ of exclusion. And so they came up with this statute of Westminster, 1931. Required reading, if you're trying to figure this out, folks. You can't just do it upon hearsay. Somebody writes something, oh, there it is. No, no, you got to study history. So 1931, the king absolves himself from making any laws, statute codes, regulations, policies for any of the Commonwealth countries. 100%. He's cut out of the deal. He can't make law anymore, but he leaves behind two things, folks. Two things. My royal style and title, and there it is, defender of the faith. That's the bait. Trust us, we got God and we'll defend your faith. That's the bait. And then, admiralty law. That's the gunboats for merchant law, Lex Mercantoria. Mer means ocean. And the chanter was the cantor, rabbi, on the bow of the boat, praying for profit when they come into port. Pretty soon the guys on the port, after listening to this for a hundred years, started calling them the Mer Chanters. Chanters from the ocean. Well, the, the laws they had on their boats, for you want to put your stuff in the hold and send it transport, commercial term, over to another place, well, you had to follow the rules of the owner of the ship. He was like God. When you put your property on his ship, he owned it for the time that it was on the ship. And there's no way you could get around it. He's basically God. Okay, so that was merchant law, Lex Mercantoria, when they put guns on the boat and they got the kings to back them. Well, that became admiralty law. It's still man's law, dead code, all four persons. James 2 and 9, King James Bible, tells you if you respect persons, you commit sin. Deuteronomy 1, 17, catch them, they move fast here. Deuteronomy 10, 17, 2 Samuel 14 and 14, Matthew 22, 16, Acts 10, 34, Romans 2, 11, supplemented and warned by James 2 and 9, if you should respect persons, you commit sin. There's your admiralty rule. It's all under personage, personation, 
403 of Canada's Criminal Code. If you submit yourself to it while well, you're a sinner, and if you see others that are doing it and trying to pressure you, they're engaged in 423, intimidation, 465, conspiracy, 180, nuisance, and 176, obstruction of your faith and beliefs. When all this is taking long, that's taking place, that's 336, breach of trust. Now note that 465 conspiracy means that if you put them in awareness of your faith and beliefs, and they ignore it, willful blindness, that's Queen versus Jorgensen, Queen versus Sands regret, when they exercise willful blindness to pretend, and then they join up with others to intimidate, nuisance, and obstruct you. Well, that's called a conspiracy, folks. That's 10 years in jail. That's really serious. So if you get an agreement with them privately that as of your newfound faith and belief in studying the scriptures that you can't respect persons lest you be a sinner, you're demanding accommodation. You can go read the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the International Covenant on Social, Economic, and Cultural Rights, both of them being the top law instruments of the world. There are no higher pieces of law. And both of them say you have the right of self-determination. Well, wise men would look closely to that word and because it's the opposite of self-termination, which is suicide. So the opposite of that, you're already dead in the grave, you committed suicide. Well, what's the opposite? What's well, called resurrection, folks, a.k.a. self-determination. That's what the Jewish underwriters uh, acting as risk management agents for the insurance underwriters did. They hired lawyers that were false Jews to write an offer to all of the goyim of the world that they could bring themselves out of the crypt in bed with this necrophilia okay a corpse we've been in bed with that all capital letter name it's a dead thing you see it on tombstones and obituary columns if you're not demanding accommodation to have your face saved uh, harmless well then you're a dumb goyim mean, and you deserve what you get you willingly submitted to and are engaged in creative copulation with the dead prostitute somehow figuring you're going to get virginity out of that forget it folks it ain't happening this is a jewish-led roman fraud hijacking that Constantine in league with the Jewish financiers and, and scholars back in 325 CE figured out how to overtake Christianity at the threat they were outnumbered three to one decided to get ahead of the crowd and and make it look like a parade when when they were getting run out of town and decided that if you can't beat them join them so they hijacked the Christian faith and they supplemented everything with personage thinking nobody would be able to figure it out in vain do you worship me teaching for doctrine the commandments of men that's Matthew 15 and 9. So as long as we're still swimming around in this pool of confusion and we're not focusing to these scriptures that they used to hijack the world, look at Romans 13. You look at the word minister there three times. You wonder how come it's there three times? Well, because three times they're warning you and they're trying to tell you that you can't uh, allow yourself to be subjected to the rules of men because it uses the word minister. So in order to properly discern what Romans 13, the hammer chapter, it's been used for 16 centuries to subjugate men. Do as you're told. God said so right here in Romans 13. So you go to Ezra 7, 23 through 26, and you're going to get a rude awakening. Wow. There's four conditions there for minister. They can't change. They're not in confusion. And they move forward to Romans 13. Those ministers spoken of in Romans 13 that we're told to submit to are from one, God's temple. They don't pay any tax. They adjudicate only with God's law, and they teach them that know it not. Four unalterable conditions, conditions that end 16 years of deception, fraud, and confusion. For once you point this out to these people that you're writing to, demanding accommodation, they can no longer assume authority over you, thinking Romans 13 means submit, bow down, pay your taxes, do as you're told. And indeed, it's to the ministers of God's temple. If you are to submit, that's who to. And if there are any taxes, half shekel per year per man to be paid, it shall be paid to God. God's temple and if there's any adjudication taking place it's going to be only with God's law and those that don't know it well they're going to get educated now that's the simple reinterpretation of Romans 13 that cannot be destroyed once you read it with Ezra 7 23 through 26 this is a great advantage to let them know you can no longer be submitting to their so-called fake fictional uh, governments that are actually corporate entities in debt 
All of those corporate entities called countries are in debt and anybody that signs up with the registry becomes a debtor, a legal fiction on the page, subjected to dead code and debt. So I thought I'd provide a little bit of that information for you. So those people struggling around trying to figure out, well, how are we going to get out of Babylon using Admiralty law? You will not. Forget it. You're just wasting your time. And this is what the dumb goyim call us. Uh, I mean, that's why the, the false Jew calls us dumb goyim. Because how can you be so stupid? In vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. You cannot mix God and mammon, for you love one and hate the other. you think people would have figured that out. But unfortunately, because of this Romans 13 fraud, people think they're supposed to submit to the government and make use of their dead, decrepit code. If you use even one aspect of code, if you're touching it and you're tasting it, well, you will perish. There it is in Colossians 2. 20 through 23 if you'd be dead from with christ from the world why would you be subject to the ordinance of the world touch not taste not all perish with the using using folks don't use their code warn them about it ezekiel 33 is the disclaimer so no longer can it be assumed that you're using dead code for a benefit for yourself therefore subjecting yourself to it by even mentioning it but rather you're going to let them know it's my obligation and duty and i'm commanded to warn you and give you fair notice of this international covenant on civil and political rights that allows every man and woman article 3 to demand accommodation article 1 to save their faith harmless article 18 and to let them know they can no longer engage in servitude article 8 please go read this because this covenant invokes upon them the inability to argue that's article 27 of the vienna convention i hope my my video here has inspired people to go and Run it back, replay it, and find out what's he say about the Vienna Convention? What what article in, in the International Covenants was he mentioning there? Or what did he mention in the Charter? And, and all of those things that I mentioned, like the Charter guarantees you life and liberty, 7 and 8, and, and Section 15 guarantees your faith and beliefs. Now, these are only for persons of law. That Charter is only applicable to the Parliament of Canada. That's Section 32. It reads it in plain English. So when you see that the charter, the top law of this corporation called Canada, only applies to parliamentarians, government servants, show me where it applies to men and women. It does not. And only applies to persons. Well, there's your dead corporate entity, folks. So I hope that uh, this will end some of the confusion and I can bring some back to the scriptural base from where this all started. Without the scriptures, without faith in Christ, you're going to continue running around like a dumb goyim. You're never, and I want, I'll quote me on this, you will never ever escape a false Jew fraud without Christ and your faith pointing to the scripture that you're not a person. They can't intimidate you to be a person, folks. Hello, wake up. This is the end all. You've listened to a lot of deranged gurus in your time. But this is no deranged guru speaking to you. It's offering you one word, one simple word. You're not a person. You can prove it, and you can prove they have no authority to intimidate you to submit to personage. Remember, James 2 and 9. Remember, 423 of their criminal code. Remember, Title 18, 242, right through to 247, tells you they can't use color of law, and they can't offend God's religious property. You are his property, Exodus 19, 5 and 6. So with that, folks, I'll bid you adieu. May God bless.